Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia, and welcome back to another episode of the first Emperor of Wait, Let's Talk Lore series, as we continue with episode 4, titled The Ding Brothers. Now last episode, we ended by mentioning that while Cao Pi was elevated to the position of Wu Guan Zhong Lang Jiang, or the Vice Prime Minister, in 211, Cao Zhi, who was just 19 at the time, ended up receiving a Marquis title, simply because of his otherworldly talent in poetry. Now, it is extremely hard for me to convey in English how excellent soldiers' poems are, as poetry is a subjective art form, but in terms of historical relevance, Soldier is widely considered as the best poet in China during the pre-Tang period, and is often compared to famous Tang poets such as Li Bai and Du Fu, as well as Song poet Su Shi. And in case these three names don't ring any bells for you, Li Bai's nickname is the saint of poetry, Du Fu's nickname is the sage of poetry, and Su Shi's nickname is the god of poetry. Now Cao Zhi didn't get a cool nickname like these three, as he's often lumped together with his father Cao Cao and his brother Cao Pi as the Sun Cao or the Three Cao, as these three were quite talented poets of this period. Of course, Cao Zhi is by far the best out of the three, and it showed even at a young age, as in 210, upon the completion of Cao Cao's grand palace in the city of Ye, Cao Cao asked everyone in attendance at the feast to write an impromptu poem to celebrate the grand structure. Now the palace itself was named Tong Chue Tai, or the Bronze Peacock Palace, as it was named after a bronze peacock statue that was discovered buried beneath the city of Ye after Cao Cao's conquest of the city. And seeing this statue as a sign of good fortune, Cao Cao ordered for the construction of a new palace right off of the Zhanghe River, so that it will function not only as a palace, but also as a naval training facility. As at the time, Cao Cao was in the early stages of preparing for his southern campaign. Now this palace would remain at this site until the Ming Dynasty until the erosions of over 1,500 years and major flooding finally destroyed it. While destroyed, the bedrock of the palace is still standing today near the city of Handan, and there have been plans to rebuild the palace as a tourist attraction, but as of now, the proposal is stuck in the planning stages as even a 2001 estimate of cost put the price tag at around 186 million RMB, which no doubt ballooned to probably over tenfold in today's money. But if you are interested in seeing the grandeur of this palace, it's actually been recreated as a permanent film set in the Zhuozhou World Studios, which has been the set for many famous Chinese period TV series that you have probably seen including some classics such as the 1994 Three Kingdom series, Journey to the West, and Water Margins, as well as some newer movies such as Donnie Yin as Guan Yu in the movie The Lost Blade Men. But back to our story, as during the feast, Cao Pi tried to show off his poetic talents with his poem, which is shown here, which, let me tell you, is quite a good poem, but when compared to Cao Zhi's version, which is also shown here, it falls a bit short. Now, you're just going to have to take my word for it, as I'm not going to translate these two as I did for the White Horse chapter in the previous episode, as both of these are filled with numerous superlatives about the grandeur of the building and Cao Cao's reign, which is quite difficult to translate into plain English. But regardless, the result proves my point, as Cao Cao would go on to name Cao Zhi as the Marquis of Pingyuan in 211. And even though titles such as this only granted you an extra income source, as they basically provided a certain amount of the tax revenue from the given region you're appointed to, it was nevertheless a public sign given by Cao Cao that Cao Zhi was being viewed as a potential heir. Thus came the visors, who soon flocked to Cao Zhi's camp. Amongst them are the brother Ding Yi and Ding Yi. Now these two brothers share a long history with the Cao clan, as they are part of the same Ding clan that Lady Ding is from. While distantly related to Lady Ding herself, Ding Yi and Ding Yi's father, Ding Chong, 
was a close personal friend of Cao Cao, and had been by Cao Cao's side since Cao Cao's earlier days as a warlord. Unfortunately, Ding Chong was a severe alcoholic and had drunk himself to death, but Cao Cao still valued their personal friendship and clan relationship enough to give both of his sons a chance in government when they came of age. Now, the oldest son, Ding Yi, in particular, was quite talented as a scholar, and Cao Cao immediately took a liking to him. And at the same time, Ding Yi's scholarly affinities also made him a fan of Cao Zhi, whose poetic talents outshined everyone else at the time. So it was no surprise when the Ding brothers threw their lots in with Cao Zhi in the air battle, especially since Cao Pi also prevented the older brother from becoming in-laws with the Cao clan. Now the story goes that once Ding Yi had come of age, Cao Cao, who at the time didn't know too much about the kid, simply wanted to continue the generational intermarriage between the Cao and the Ding clans, as starting with Cao Cao's eunuch grandfather Cao Song, every generation of Cao had married a Lady Ding as the main wife. And yes, eunuchs can marry, they just can't do anything after the marriage. So while Cao Pi had already taken Lady Zhen for his wife, Cao Cao still had a suitable daughter in Lady Cao, or the Princess of Qinghe, who was the older sister of Cao Pi, who could marry Ding Yi. Yet when Cao Cao asked Cao Pi's opinion on the matter, Cao Pi shut the idea down because Ding Yi was born with an eye defect that made him blind in one eye. And wishing his sister could marry someone better, Cao Pi suggested General Xia Hou Dun's son, Xia Hou Mao, instead. And hearing this, Cao Cao agreed. But later on, once Cao Cao got to meet and know Ding Yi, he would regret the decision, as he would go on to state that even if Ding Yi was blind in two eyes, I would still marry my daughter to him. Especially since Princess Qinghe's marriage to Xia Hou Mao would turn out to be a tragedy, as Xia Hou Mao lacked ambition and focused his time entirely on his state building and wealth accumulation, which in turn afforded him the opportunity to take on many concubines. And displeased, Princess Qinghe ended up allying herself with Xia Hou Mao's two younger brothers, in framing Xia Hou Mao with the goal of getting him killed. But fortunately, at the time, Cao Rui, who was the emperor, had the wits to recognize this plot by his aunt, as Xia Hou Mao was spared. And with this divide between the married couple, they would not divorce, as that was rather uncommon during the period, but go on to live separate lives for the remainder of their days. But despite not marrying into Cao Cao's family, Ding Yi would still go on to have a great court career, leading up to the creation of Wei in 220, as he would take part in many court intrigue as he was instrumental in forcing the suicide of Cui Yan and the death of Mao Jie that followed in 216, as both of these very well-respected officials were in favor of picking Cao Pi as heir. Now obviously, Ding Yi, being a supporter of Cao Zhi, could not allow this, as he would purposely misinterpret Cui Yan's comments on a paper praising Cao Cao to hint at Cao Cao that Cui Yan was secretly a Han loyalist that was against Cao Cao, and much like how Cao Cao have always been ruthless with critics and arrogant scholars such as Bian Rang, Kong Rong, and Xu Yu, Cui Yan would be sentenced to death. But due to their prior friendship, Cao Cao allowed Cui Yan to take his own life in prison to save him the shame of a public execution. But following Cui Yan's death, outrage erupted at court as it was very clear to many that Ding Yi had purposely misconstrued Cui Yan's original comments to frame him. And Mao Jie, who had always been known as someone who was very fair, but extremely stubborn, openly challenged Ding Yi at court. But unfortunately, due to Cao Cao's favoritism of Ding Yi at the time, Mao Jie's statement were also seen as just another defender of Cui Yan, as Mao Jie was also thrown into prison. But thankfully, due to the efforts of many others at court, Mao Jie would eventually be released and pardoned, but Cao Cao did strip Mao Jie of all his posts as he was let go as a commoner. 
And in the same year, Mao Zedong would end up dying of depression and old age at home. Now, Cao Cao did end up feeling a bit of remorse at this point, as Mao Zedong had always been this great official who worked extremely hard for the people and was incorruptible. Which is why when he died, his family didn't even have enough money to give him a proper funeral. So in the end, Cao Cao relented and subsidized the expense of Mao Zedong's funeral by giving his family some money and cloth and ended up providing his son, Mao Zi, a court position. Now, before we end our episode here, it is worth noting that Tui Yan's death was very symbolic as the Tui clan was and will be an extremely influential and powerful gentry clan for centuries to come. And Tui Yan in particular had always been known to have a keen eye for talent within his clan and for those outside of his clan. For example, when Sima Yi's older brother, Sima Long, first entered the courts, Cui Yan approached him as he would repeatedly tell him that his younger brother, Sima Yi, is destined for great things. And likewise, Cao Pi was Cui Yan's pick for heir over Cao Zhi, despite the fact that Cao Zhi's wife was Lady Cui, who was Cui Yan's niece. Now, she will also end up getting sentenced to death by Cao Cao after Cui Yan's death, using her vanity as an excuse. But the fact that Cao Zhi's marriage to the Cui clan didn't sway Cui Yan's support speaks volumes about Cao Pi. And with that, we're going to end our episode here, as we'll continue next time with perhaps Cao Zhi's most famous advisor in Yang Xiu. So hopefully you enjoyed this episode enough to drop a like to support the channel, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!